This video is sponsored by Tourbox. Many people just do like that. They open Blender, they press render, and they get their donuts. Hashtag my first 3D, hashtag Blender, hashtag Donut Mafia, hashtag no post processing. And it's a shame this donut will look so much better with some tweaking, which I'm gonna show you how using this octopus here as an example. That's before, that's after, that's before, that's after. We will start with some more advanced things and I have a quick post processing hack in the end. What you need to do is to first add some render layers. You're just gonna select this panel here, right, you see? And you're gonna select, you can select pretty much all of those if you want. I already know what I need, so I'm gonna use the combined, which is like the main image, then the Z depth, which is like the depth of the scene, so that you can, for example, add some mist afterwards, then the normal pass, so that we can relight the scene after it has been rendered, which sounds crazy, right? Also, we have, for example, the glossy uh, direct and indirect, which are gonna be useful for adding reflections later on. Now to actually get an output of this file as an open EXR, what you have to do is to go to the compositing window here. You see you have render layers. I have two of them. One is with the glass, the other one is without the glass. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna use, for example, the one with the glass here, and I'm gonna connect the image to a file output here, which can be just added, you know, with a file output like that. And if you press N, then you have this side panel here where you can add more inputs or remove them from down here. I have only four passes here. So image, uh, the depth pass called mist, then the glossy direct and indirect. And for the other um, render layer here, I have some more passes, for example, the normal pass, which also comes from this render layer and is outputted into output and out is output, something like that. Basically will be output to my desktop from this node as an open EXR multi-layer, which means all the layers are gonna be in one file. Also make sure to select the float full as the export like the color depth. This means we have more data and more colors so that we can make better images in the end. So now we're in Photoshop and what we're gonna do is that first we have to have the Pro EXR plugin, which is a free plugin that, you know, gives Photoshop the ability to open EXR files. So I'm gonna drag an EXR file onto Photoshop here. And now you see we have a lot of these like passes or passes down here. These are my layers without the glass. We also had the second render layer with the glass or the fishbowl. So what I'm gonna do is that, you know, I cannot just drag this here because when I do this, it's just gonna import this as one single image. Doesn't look very good, it's just white. To actually fix this problem with the Pro EXR plugin, what I have to do is to select the file, EXR file, and right click on it and select open with Photoshop. And now it's gonna open this as a second layer here on this Photoshop uh, main window. And here you see I have the mist image, glossy indirect and glossy direct uh, passes which are all very useful. So I'm gonna select all of those, maybe except the missed pass. I'm gonna delete this one. I'm gonna select all of those and press uh, Command C. So I'm gonna copy those or Control C if you're on Windows, and I'm gonna paste them into my main window. The first thing I want to do is to remove all of those clipping highlights here. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is that I am gonna select my main image without the glass, so the no glass image, and move this to the top. So this is like the main layer I'm gonna be working on. And I'm gonna decrease the exposure in these regions here. To do that, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna add an exposure adjustment layer. And as you see, uh, when I increase or decrease the slider, this is gonna recover all this color data because this is a 32-bit image. So I'm gonna decrease this to around, uh, let's say here, this looks for about nice. And what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna press Alt and click in the middle here so that I'm gonna add a clipping mask. I believe it's called like that. So right now this is only gonna be affecting this layer down here, this no glass image RGBA. Now you only have this exposure have effect on this little uh, tentacle piece here. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna add a mask. These white boxes here or black boxes are masks. So I have this mask here and now I'm gonna invert this mask by pressing Command I or pressing a button on Torbox, which I'm gonna talk in a minute. What I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna paint onto this mask here the areas where I want this exposure thing to have effect. Here I can see the color of my brush. I can just paint on those areas where I want the exposure to be a bit more reasonable. We just have to get rid of like most of these very blown out things there. And then you might see, okay, this looks like very, um, how to say that it has some re really dark 
blotches or splotches. So I'm gonna invert the brush again, make sure my brush is very, very soft. And I'm gonna get back to those areas which are a bit too dark now. Okay, and this is basically how we have fixed this area here. And here I'm gonna increase the hardness and get a bit closer so that I can remove this dark line in the border here. You're probably asking how do I change the size of my brush and how do I make it a bit more soft, a bit more uh, weak, whatever. Well, for that we have Turbox. Turbox is a little box that acts as a controller. And for those of you who have never been fans of physical controllers, including me, Turbox is actually a really pleasant surprise. So what can you control with it? Can you control the interest rates of the central bank? No, but you can assign different shortcuts to it. For example, in Photoshop, you can control the brush size and hardness and pretty much everything there. And even though this doesn't have official presets for Blender, you can create your own settings. For example, when your laptop doesn't have the number pad, which is very useful, Turbox can become your number pads. And carrying it around is much easier than carrying a full keyboard, you know. In the end, if you get used to it, this is gonna save you a lot of time as you don't have to take your eyes off screen to press Shift, Command, Alt, E, when you can just use a single button on Turbox instead. To make your life faster with Turbox, I have a special discount for you in the description. So let's continue the post-processing and I promised you a little quick tip and hack how to make your images better. But first, we have to relight the scene. So how do you relight a scene after rendering? Well, actually there is a strong reason for that and the reason is that, you know, the octopus, when I make this smaller, has quite a bit of contrast on this side here, but on this side it isn't very, very visible. I mean, it is very like dark and has like a very flat dynamic range here. So to relight this whole uh, octopus uh, thing here, what we have to do is to use the normal pass. So the normal pass is uh, here. It looks like that. It's telling us like the direction that every face is looking at. If I want to use this to relight the scene, what I have to do is to add some adjustment layers on top of it. But first what you have to do is to change the mode to 32 bit, to 16 bit actually because otherwise we don't have some blend modes here, which are gonna be useful when relighting the scene. So if you just go here and select it like to be 16 bits, then it's gonna ask you if it has to fusion or not the layers. And whatever you choose here, it's gonna give a pretty horrible result. For example, if you select not to fusion them, it's gonna give you like this very horrible looking thing here. And that's because in 16 bits, we don't have as much information as in 32 bit. So this means we cannot change the exposure as we did this in the 32-bit version. So I'm gonna go back and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this uh, image here and the adjustment layer also with shift and I'm gonna right click on them and select fusion layers. I don't know how this is in English. I believe fusion layers or put those layers together looks exactly the same, but now we can go up here to select image mode and change this to 16 bits and select don't fusion. And this looks exactly the same. There is no difference anymore. And now let's take the normal pass and let's get crazy with it. So we're gonna take the normal pass here, normal pass, and let's add a levels adjustment layer. And this is working for all layers right now. So we just have to press alt and add a this little like arrow you see here, right? This arrow here. And with Alt clicking here, you can see this uh, this layer. And with this middle thing here, we can change the intensity of the light we're gonna add, or like the contrast of the light. So I'm gonna drag this for about here because I want to have like a really strong contrast on this on the sides and on everywhere actually. And now the next thing we're gonna add is a layer mix nodes. I believe layer mix, yes. It's not a node, I'm such a blender type here. It's They're not nodes, they're adjustment layers in Photoshop. And here you can change the red, green and blue channels of your image. But if you check monochrome, now you can basically see how the light looks. Make it so that you have exactly the light you're wanting to have. This seems to be for about okay to me. And the next thing we're gonna do is to add a uh, hue saturation node. So the hue saturation is gonna make it so that we can change basically the direction of the lighting afterwards. But it has to come after the layer weight node or layer mix node. So if you change the hue here, you can pretty much give like uh, a different vibe to the lighting and you can change where it comes from. So I'm gonna do something like that, something very high contrast from this side here. And now this is done. So how can you add this uh, thing here to your main image? Well, for that we need blend modes. So I'm gonna place the normal layer on top of the, of the thing here and also 
displace all of those uh, adjustment layers as well here and we miss the clipping masks now which is not good so something like that and now I'm gonna take this normal picture here or this layer and select the blend mode here and change this to overlay or you can also select something other for example lighten overlay seems to be the best and now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna add a mask because I don't want this light to be for example here I only want this light to be on that octopus. I'm gonna select the mask thing here. I'm gonna invert the mask with command I or on Turbox I have a separate control for this one. And I'm gonna paint in the areas where I do want to have this uh, extra lighting effect. So about here and also I'm gonna make this brush a bit smaller. Something like that. This looks a bit better I think. And what you also can do is that you can change the color of your lighting if you're just gonna add a hue saturation again and move this at the top and set it to colorize and with it colorize you can you know change the tone of your lighting. I think blue works pretty well here because on this side we have warm tones and something like that. And on this side here we have something blue. So I'm gonna increase the saturation, maybe two. Just decrease the opacity of the layer here. Something like that. So this one here is before and this one here is after. I think it looks a bit better. This is basically finished. I just need to add the glass here. So to add the glass, I need a, what is it called? I need the glass layer, the glass image you see here. And I'm gonna move this to the top here and this image looks like that. This is our modified post-processed version and this is like the actual render with the glass. So you only want to have the glass here because they're pretty much identical. I can just use a blend mode, which is probably something like lighten, I believe. Yes, so without the layer and with the layer, we're just gonna add the glass here. But there is a problem and the problem is that, you know, the octopus here is a bit doubled because when the light rays are gonna go through the glass, they're gonna like, um, be like distorted a bit and to fight that I'm just gonna add a mask to this glass image here with this button here I'm gonna invert the mask uh, actually I'm gonna keep it that way and I'm just gonna paint with the black color in the areas where I don't want this doubling thing to happen so for about here and let's see if we have something else here yes we have a doubling happening uh, maybe also in this direction, in this direction. Basically all the borders of the octopus seem to be working pretty nicely for this one. And also here you see, we're getting back to those blown out highlights. So I'm gonna remove this overlay here and also up here where we fix those highlights. And this looks a bit better right now, I think. So now I'm gonna add some really nice reflections, which is gonna be done with the glossy, I believe, direct, maybe, or indirect. The indirect looks very stupidly noisy, so I'm actually gonna delete this one. But I'm gonna use the glossy direct here, and I'm gonna add some of the stars on that image. So I'm gonna move this to the top, like to the very top here. I'm gonna select all of those layers that I actually need. This glossy direct layer needs a mask, of course, because right now this is like overpowering everything. So I'm gonna take the layer here and add a mask here, which I'm gonna invert. So now we don't have anything here. And I'm gonna use a brush here, which I'm gonna make really, really soft that you can do with right clicking and dragging this or using Torbox. I'm gonna add some of those stars up here but this is a very dark layer so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna change the blend mode to something that works so lighten seems to be working pretty well or éclaircir like it says in my photoshop or if you're French it probably says the same thing I'm not French actually I just I just like using photoshop in French maybe I'm an idiot I don't know <laughs> so uh, just adding some of those stars on that bowl here on the on the borders here. So this is with, this is without. This reflection here looks pretty nice. I mean, this was before and this is after. So I think that's a successful mission here. And I call this the day. So this is finished and now we have the last tip the best tip actually. This is like 99% of time how I actually post process something. So what you're gonna do is that you're gonna select all of your layers that you're actually using. Actually we can delete the layers we're not using. So I'm gonna select those with shift and delete those and you are gonna press shift command alt e. So this is gonna create a new layer of that or you can just use a shortcut on Toolbox, which is gonna create those automatically for you, just with a single click. And then we have this layer here, and now you can press, uh, I believe, Shift. I have a 
button for that on Toolbox as well. It's called uh, Camera Row Filter. But you can also access this Camera Row Filter if you go up here and there is this filter, the Camera Row Filter. So you take the Camera Row Filter and this is a really amazing filter. I mean, you can do so much great stuff with it. Since this is gonna be my thumbnail, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so that I can actually, you know, have an impression or an idea how this is gonna look when it is the thumbnail. What you have to do is to take a piece of paper. Like for example, I actually have a book here about uh, Norse mythology. So I'm gonna use this to cover uh, the screen here so that I don't see what I'm doing here at all, right? I just don't see the sliders. I'm gonna take a random slider. Actually, it's better to go from the top down because this is the most logical way and actually adjusting the temperature doesn't give too much because you know renders are having the best white balance already so you don't have to change this. So I'm gonna start with the exposition or this uh, exposure here and I'm gonna cover this with a book and I'm gonna drag the slider all the way to the right, to the left, sorry. <laughs> and I'm gonna increase this until I feel there is too much of that. So I'm gonna go up there until it feels a bit too much. Maybe something like that. So until I see too much of that, I'm gonna back off. And this is the right amount of exposure. Because if you see what you're doing, you might be thinking, okay, like 0.5, this is actually too much. Like, I mean, I maybe should use only 0.3. But what happens is that you're actually not thinking with your eyes. You should be judging on what you see on the screen instead of these numbers. Again, you're gonna take the contrast slider. You're gonna take this all the way to the left. And now you're gonna slide until you feel you have too much contrast, which I do feel right here. So I'm gonna back off around here and let's see what it is. It is 12. So basically uh, you're gonna do this with all the sliders. In the end, you're gonna have a pretty, pretty nice result because you're doing everything based on what actually looks good instead of what you think looks good. So this is before and this is after. And I mean, this is a difference, right? This is a pretty big difference. And most of that comes from the camera raw filter. I hope you can you can post process more confidently now, now that you know there is such a nice thing like camera raw filter. See you next time. And if you're interested in Torbox, you can check this link out. It's a, it's, it's a really nice box. I mean, I am in the faith of controllers again. I was hating them before. See you next Tuesday. Actually Monday. I believe I usually upload Mondays, but sometimes I do upload on Tuesdays as well. Anyways, bye.